and welcome to Add More Zest. My name's Rebecca, also known as 4 at 147 and I'm going to do another Whip and Waffle today with another section of my Flying Feathers. So let me just uh, rearrange the next section. This one's actually pretty straight but these side ones weren't. So I tend to rearrange as I go along. I am on another what I call bigger section. <clears throat> I'm going to use the same pen and tray as last time because laziness. Why not? And let's go for E first which is my first symbol across the bottom. I'm just going to take that piece of dryer sheet out for a minute while I tip some diamonds out, make my life a little bit easier. So I hope you are all well and having a very good day. Let me zoom you all in, make sure that my easel is in the best place it can be. And let's get going with the squares and see how many comments etc that we can get through today. I don't think I've got any other updates to give as I'm filming this so it'll probably be maybe someday I'll have some updates on life. Who knows? Let's see what happens in between. Um, but yeah I am working on flying feathers from prism diamond painting which my app decided and I did the kitting up video was up on Monday for this one and it's the next large painting that it's decided I'm doing I'm trying to think what other videos I've had scheduled in between this one because sometimes I film a little bit out of order sometimes I film in order it really does depend if it involves clearing my desk of something that I'm going to then put all back on my desk the next time um, but yeah I will have the video for my unboxing for carrot art should have been the last one that you've seen and I will be physically unboxing that once I've finished this whip and chat I will move this painting and try and do a few other different type videos than whip and chats though there might be another whip and chat on Saturday I've not I've not fully decided yet exactly what is going to be done when I know I do need to de-kit a painting this week I've not yet decided which one possibly the big one um, possibly I'll de-kit my big painting um, my diamond art club and then that one the case and everything can get boxed up and away and then that sort of flows with the fact that I have already kitted up my next big one which I've done before I de-kitted, which is not the normal way I do it. I normally prefer to de-kit before I kit up, just because I find, you know, that's the natural order of things. But because I managed to finish everything in this last week, I only had things to de-kit and didn't have anything kitted up, which makes a little change for me. Normally I have a big one on the go when I can de-kit small ones. It's not very often I end up finishing them all at the same time. But we'll see how long this one takes me. It's a little bit scattered at the moment, but it's of course a lot of the same diamond. I quite like it this way. It keeps it a little bit interesting, um, but I'm not tipping out diamonds and tipping them back in to the pot constantly like you would if it is loads of different colours in a confetti section. So I'd still call this confetti but it is still the same diamonds <clears throat> which I kind of like. 
I like the variety of them not all being next to each other. But as I say, not having to tip the diamonds out and tip more diamonds back in on multiple occasions, which just takes time. Um, those that are able to, in effect, kit up into trays and have trays laid out for all their colours so they can just pick them up as and when they need for the painting. I really do like that idea because I think that just saves a lot of time. Then you can just tip a load of diamonds in like I have now. Tip a load into your tray. And when you finish with the tray, pop it back on a shelf or to the side and then pick up your next tray and you're not doing that process of tipping it back into pots. But I just don't have the space for that, even though I do diamond paint on my dining table. It's, it's not, it's a space that is so well used. Um, I can't leave something kitted out on that all the time. It's just not practical. It's constantly being used for work, for meals, um, for packaging up shop items it's used. Um, when we do postage it's often used because I'm often still packing orders in here um, and Megan gets the postage ready so she uses the table for that. Yeah, just it's just not going to happen. Um, okay, so comments. Susan says, congratulations on the new addition to your family. She said she looked up pictures of a cockapoo and they are totally adorable. She said, my nephew has a King Charles called Luna, named Luna. She loves that name for a pet. Yes, she got named on her car ride home as Luna. Um, she says, as always, I loved hanging out with you while you diamond paint. Um, she's recovering from COVID. Oof. So she's not up to diamond painting herself right now, but she does miss it. So this week she has lived vicariously through me. Uh, she said, COVID is not a joke, which I agree. I know this latest strain has or it seems to have in the UK, has made people rather ill with it. Um, not to the status of hospitalisation, but def not that I, for people I know anyway. I know it does affect people that way. Um, but it definitely seems to have, have knocked people out for about a week um, and takes a lot longer to recover from. Or at least it seems to say that's just my experience with people I know that have had it. Uh, she says she's fully vaccinated and boosted and it about wiped her out. Um, she has diabetes and asthma, she says. So without these vaccines, she would. Um, she doesn't think she would have made it out the other side. She said, of course, without the vaccines... She said she would never got on the cruise ship either. So I'm guessing that's where you think you got it from, Susan. She says, but in all fairness, when we booked it, she said COVID was on the downslide and we thought it would be over by now. She says, boy, were we wrong. Thankfully, Hubby didn't get sick too. She said it was just her. Um, and thank you for sharing. Well, that comment was left nearly two weeks ago as I'm filming this. So I hope you are feeling loads better now, Susan, and back to diamond painting, because to be wiped out enough to not diamond paint is pretty wiped out, because it's not a strenuous hobby. Um, I'd say it's more relaxing than strenuous, but I can imagine if you feel absolutely lousy it may not be something that you feel up to doing. Especially if you've been wiped out by COVID. 
sorry, let's show, I was just sticking another one before I go to the next comment. Um, so Hilary, she said, thank you for another great video. She's just started her first diamond painting and she was wondering, she says, can she use the UK version of baking paper, paper which is a brown colour, instead of USA parchment paper, which is white? Um, I think you can. However, you need to make sure that it is non-stick. That is the key thing. I would test it on a very small area. Sometimes you will find with baking sheets, if I remember rightly, um, you will find that it is. it can sometimes be non-stick on one side and not on another which of course can cause problems if you put it the wrong way up. A bit like if you do it with one of the clear sheets that come on poured glue paintings like this one originally had on it. There is only one side of that clear sheet that will peel off your diamond painting easily um, and the other side won't. I'm pretty sure I've heard people use baking sheets, but I think they have used the higher brands um, that say that they are non-stick on both sides. But don't put it down on your whole painting when you test it. Just do a little corner and see if it peels up nicely. And then take note of the side that you use. I have always just used cover paper. This cover release paper that we do that is double-sided. I've just always used that and I've used that or used the sheet that came with the painting um, and that is that has just been my habit it's because I don't like the clear covers I looked for something else and found cover paper and the fact that it doesn't matter what side and it's thicker than baking paper so therefore I mean, I'm still reusing the same sheets I've always been using. I might have added to some due to the amount of paintings I've had kitted up. But I've just always used cover paper with mine if I've not used the backing paper that comes with a double-sided tape one. Quite often, if I have a double-sided tape painting, I will just use that paper and I'll just cut it. I'll cut it lightly with a craft knife and use that because it's there. So it may as well get used and get thrown away. And I can divide them up into different size sections sometimes, which is nice. Cover paper, I tend to stick to the same size apart from my last advent calendar where I actually trimmed the cover paper down into smaller sizes so I could get 24 out of it. Double-sided tape is easier. <coughs> Excuse me. A double-sided tape is easier to cut down into however many sections you want because you're working from one big sheet. Um, whereas cover paper, as say, you tend to stick to a default size. Either the size that I use or double that. Depending on where you've purchased it from, and what size you prefer. Okay, glue dot's giving me a little bit of aggro. There's actually more E on here than I thought. Let's go up here. I've got visions of being out of missing at least one when it comes to this. I nearly missed a couple before because of the way I've worked across my section. So I'm just rechecking where I've just done and see if I can work my way across. Um, Nelly, she said, hi Rebecca. She said, I purchased a magnetic cord. Ooh. She said, an adapto for my light pad. She says, and it works. She said, she's thinking of buying a set for her phone computer tablets as it should help with broken cords. 
um, and she's almost finished a diamond painting of a rose vase. I I really like the magnetic cords, especially when it does come more so when it comes to the likes of your light pad, because the amount of times, I mean, my first light pad actually lasted a really long time. Um, before I think it was more the plugging and unplugging that caused the connector to stop working. It was more the repeated action of plugging and unplugging it that made it go, uh -uh, I'm just going to disconnect and not work anymore. But the second one I purchased, it did get knocked as somebody was walking past me and the charging port did get ripped out. So those, if now I work on a wireless one, which has a lot better connector, um, plus it, it's not very often that it's plugged in while I'm working on a painting, because often um, I will just pop it on charge when I notice it's getting low, and it will just sit on the table charging when I'm not diamond painting. So that tends to you know, prevent it getting knocked. But with the thinner light pads, yeah, I definitely recommend a magnetic charger of some port, some sort. It just saves you spending more than you need to on, um, on charging cords. And the benefit is if you do change it to multiple items, you can still use the same magnetic wire and just leave the actual charging port in the device um, and you just use one wire then to charge multiple devices because the different connectors are what go directly into your tablet, your phone, your light pad. It can really help if you're either short on plug sockets or have this big mass of wires near one plug socket, which is what we do for charging multiple different things. Sometimes I really think that we just need to invest in lots of different connectors and just use the one. Um, or even potentially have a couple of the wires there so that multiple people can charge their own devices. I just dread to think how many connectors we would need to get for a household of six because I know my computer charger downstairs is used by multiple people, multiple times, um, for various different devices, for the kids' Macs, for the kids' iPads. It's constantly being used, so I can imagine we would need quite a few Type-C connectors um, to be able to let everybody have a charging port that stays in their device. But it might be something I look into if I can find a deal with enough because it would definitely make the wire situation down the side of the couch a lot easier to deal with. Um, Sarah Jane, she says, congratulations. This is on Luna. She says she trains dogs with her job. Ooh, I have a source of information. Um, she says, and sometimes they go hyper after feeding. She said, if your food is coloured, she said, that can make them go hyper too, as it's like sugar. No, a food isn't, isn't coloured. She actually tends to go hyper before her food. So I think it's just pent up energy. Um, she says she's a uh, she's a working breed to her collie times spring. Used to do zoomies for 15 years. Um, yak chews, she said, are great for chewers. She's definitely a chewer. She's definitely with her teeth. She loves to chew various little things, especially this poor little monkey and its little flat arm with a bit of crinkle in it. Um, she properly chews that one. 
Um, she says yak chews are great for chewers and she uses Jackie Snuffle Treats as she donates money to help other dogs uh, too and she's in the UK. Oh, I'll look that one up. I'm all for supporting, you know, the smaller businesses where possible. So I'll have a look at that one, see if I can find suitable puppy treats. She does have treats. Um, she doesn't tend to have treats that much. She tends to have uh, more of her kibble as her rewards than she does treats. But that's because when we first bought a home, we didn't want to introduce too many different types of food to her. But we are getting to the point now where we're going to start introducing different things for treats and rewards just to see what suits her because we didn't want to unset unsettle her stomach right at the beginning. So we stuck with the bag of food that we brought home from, um, from the breeder. They gave us a big bag of food that actually lasted about three weeks. Uh, we've only just had to buy uh, a second bag and actually her food is the cheapest thing we've bought for her, I think. Um, she says, hope you have many years to come with the puppy. She says she has four dogs herself, two Yorkshire Terriers and one Chihuahua and one Corky. Um, her Corky is six months old now. Well, I may be calling on you, Sarah Jane, depending on on how she goes. At the minute, she is really intelligent. She's really good at picking up tricks and things. Um, I'm sure it'll just be the new ones that may take a bit when it doesn't involve some form of sitting, staying or leaving. Um, whereas at the moment, we're expanding those to different situations because she does know how to sit and how to stay and how to leave something alone. So we're just expanding the situations in which she's expected to do that at the moment. Especially when somebody arrives in the room um, and she gets very excited to see different people of the household coming downstairs because of course they're there for her <laughs> and for her alone. And she's not too happy when they when they come in and then disappear off to work, but she's getting better. Um, Diamond Painting Addict, she's commented on one of my older Heaven and Earth designs. And she said it's called Clue, by the way. So the only thing I can think is that's the name Cluedo. That's, it's called Clue in the States. It's called Cluedo in the UK. I don't actually know what it was that I was discussing, but that's the only thing I know in the States. Clue is a game. Um, in the UK, the same game is called Cluedo. We do love a good game of Cluedo, though. Um, like the fact of strategic playing, um, especially when you're playing in a large group. Family games nights, we do really like to play Cluedo. There's a few of us that love sitting around the table playing Cluedo and trying to pick up on what other people have said and done. There's a couple of us that are a bit more competitive than others when it comes to it, but also a couple of others, a couple of us that tend to pick up more on things other people say or do more so. Um, not just marking the clear answers on the sheet, but marking the, you know, possibly not the right ones and, and guess a bit sooner because of things people have said. Makes it entertaining. Or at least it does for us competitive few. <laughs> uh, Sarah Jane has also said, she said months are flying by now. She said her dogs are lay beside her. I forgot what number, what letter I was on then. It's a good job I've kept my tub handy, so I know. Um, yeah, Sarah Jane says, months are flying by now. Her dogs are lay beside her while she diamond paints. Uh, she's currently doing a fix, 
fixing the snow. She said it's a 30 by 40 in round. She said she's loving these diamonds as they really pearly looking. She says, I hope you enjoy your evening. Thank you, Sarah Jane. Oh, couldn't get the diamond to squoosh in then. Okay, where am I? Just checking, I haven't missed any on this side. I've just spotted one on its own up there. In fact, there's another one. Try and get the single ones when I spot them because otherwise I'll just probably miss them again on the next go round. And then work on this little block. The colours are really, are really different in this one. They're a lot more pastel, I'd say. A lot more pastely, a lot more subdued. I'm guessing it won't be the same when it comes to actually getting to do the parrots. But the background definitely is. And it's definitely very different because, as I say, the colours are quite scattered, which I really enjoy. It keeps it that little bit interesting. I enjoy block work as well. I think they both have their place and I do like to vary it up. But I've just finished doing the Add More Zest logo, um, which is definitely more blocky. It's more of a blocky... Um, well, the whole background was 3865, so definitely very blocky. And then the Diamond Art Club, even though that had some real sections of sort of varied colours, you wouldn't find that a section would have colours dotted about the same way this one does. Um, it would just have little mini blocks within it. Um, to make up the painting because charting is different between different companies which keeps it interesting especially if you mix up what companies you work with um, or work on should I say different companies that you purchase from you can vary up how your diamond painting is to do at the same time uh, Bella the Beast, she said there's a sour apple spray that you can spray in your mouth or on the stuff that you liked, they like to bite. Uh, you can also make it at home, she said, from two cups of lemon juice with one cup of white vinegar. Or you can do two cups of apple cider vinegar with one cup of white vinegar. Maybe I'll have to try that one because the one we have purchased, the sort of puppy no biting, she actually seems to quite like that one. It doesn't seem to bother her. So maybe we need to try a different recipe that will actually work with her and stop her biting stuff. There is some stuff that she seems, she seems to have calmed down, avoiding it a little bit more. I'm just not sure if she's avoiding it from the training um, and telling her to stop or whether she's avoiding it because of the spray because she does still do it sometimes. So maybe when she's out next out the house on her walk, I need to do a respray of furniture and see when she doesn't know it's there, see if that makes a difference maybe. Okay, just checking I've not missed any before I move up. If I constantly recheck if I've not missed any, I'm more likely to catch any that I have missed. Or at least I feel better about it. And then if I do find one that I've missed later, I'm like, well, I checked 50 times, so it was going to happen regardless. Um, jo says, hi Rebecca, she says, great video as usual, um, she says thank you, she really enjoys these videos and loves hearing comments from other people in the community, yes, that's why I love doing it, I feel, I even though I read all comments as they come through on email, 
I feel as though there's just that extra little bit of attention and bit of conversation that happens when I read them out on on a whip and waffle. Um, so I do like that all whip and waffle comments are saved for future whip and waffles. Um, and it saves me typing out long answers as well sometimes, which can be good. It, it gives allows me time to give you a full, you know, a full answer to your question in hopefully a way that comes across a lot better than the typed word can do. Um, she says she's back to playing catch up on videos. Uh, since she hasn't been able to diamond paint and watch due to travel preparations. Ooh. Uh, she says now she's trying to work as much as she can on her work in progress and watch as many, many videos as she can since she knows she will be catching up after she gets back from her vacation in May. So she's trying to pre-prepare and be all caught up before she goes. Um, she was hoping to finish her work in progress, she says, before my vacation, but she's only about 10% done on a 40 by 50 painting, and her vacation starts next week. Uh, might be a bit of a push. Sometimes you never know. I do find that sometimes I get through sections of a painting a lot quicker than I thought I would, but then sometimes life starts getting in the way and it actually ends up becoming a lot slower than I thought it would. It tends to go through um, a few different a few different phases of time taken. But it will be there when you get back, that's for sure. Uh, Angelique just says hi. Hi Angelique. Um, I hope you're enjoying the whip and waffles. Um, Sandra has also suggested, she said that they make a bitter apple spray um, that you can apply to stuff you don't want your puppy licking or chewing. Uh, it works like a charm for her pups. I even sprayed, we even sprayed my slippers the other day. Um, and yeah, she promptly decided to, to chew one of them while they were on my feet. So we will keep trying and see how she goes. But she's getting better at not doing it. And hopefully it's partly the spray, partly the training, whichever. No, we'll put it all down to training. We'll put it all down to our hard work. Sounds better, doesn't it? Um, Judy says, congratulations on the puppy. She re recommends lots of toys and tennis balls. She says also puppy training class, she said was a must for us. It really helped with their golden retriever puppy. Uh, we also recommend a dog flirt pole, which takes up a lot of their energy. Um, also frozen teething rings will help. Frozen cucumber is a great treat too. We'll have to have a look at what one of those dog flirt bowls poles are. Is that like a a fishing pole with a toy on the end? I think I've seen some of those. Um, she definitely has lots of toys. She loves um, the flat ones with crinkling. They're some of her favourites. She also likes the small ones with squeakers. Um, that she can carry around squeaking to her heart's content though depending on the make of them some of them seem to be better than others so we do have one that's a little pig um, that she carries around squeaking and she loves doing that however her little monkey which had a squeaker in the head and crinkle in the body uh, she popped within five minutes she got treated to a second one the other day because it still seemed to be her favourite, even though she popped it. Um, and she went around squeaking that and popped it again within five minutes. So she currently has two that just crinkle. She still likes them though, they're still her favourites. So one stays in her crate for night time and 
one is out for her to play with during the day but yeah she loves loves her toys she also has some mini tennis balls which she really likes when she starts getting the zoomies and um, she likes to chase after it and we've been doing the stay and the leave and stuff in between to give her a little bit of time to calm down before we send the ball off for her again just trying to keep keep it playful and allow her to burn off her energy but not to get too too hyperactive is the reasoning behind it sometimes she does still go a little bit overboard and stops listening to stuff but more often than not she's getting better oh she also said good luck judy thanks for the luck i think we'll take that <laughs> we may well need that uh especially maybe the teenage years is when we'll need it i'm not looking forward to when that will be i need to figure out what month that will be but part of me doesn't want to know she's nearly three months so yeah i don't think i'm don't think i'm ready to find out how soon the teenage years will come round after the pup years uh, Tony says love your videos she said she started diamond painting last July she is hoping to invest in some bigger projects that are not too expensive she said what would you recommend the biggest one she's done is 40 by 50 uh, so she wants to go better bigger she says diamond painting therapy um sorry diamond painting has been great therapy for her um i mean it's one of those cost it's always a cost versus quality so both diamond art studio uk and diamond art club which is based in the us often do larger ones though they won't be the cheaper price but they are really nice to do they're nice diamond paintings um, to spend that amount of time on you could try i've had quite a few bigger ones from aliexpress if you search my youtube channel actually for blossom tree it is a company i can't remember the name of the store it's a company on aliexpress they primarily do big images i think they only do round but I found the quality of those big ones was actually really nice for the price. Um, and they tend to have images, you know, that are their right to have. So search YouTube for Blossom Tree and you should find a link in the unboxing, which will take you to their store. I think I've done a couple from them or did I do? Yes, I have done a couple from them. I did two birds on a branch as well and i think my mum's also got one from them um they will probably be more the price point you're looking for and um, they are poured glue which is nice and as i say they tend to they're a company that tend to use images that they can use rather than ones um, that may be a mixture of ones they have the right to use and ones they don't so that's probably your best bet for a company that's a large one they are based in china so it will take a bit to arrive so you might want to look and order sooner rather than later so that you have it there when you finish your diamond painting because who wants to stop therapy to wait for a parcel i know i don't I know it begins with a Q, um, the name of the store on AliExpress, but I can't remember exactly. So that's the easiest way for you to find it. Uh, okay. F, I think, is done. What's my next lowest one is the letter K. I also have a couple of X here and I actually only have two looking at it there is only two so let's fill those in because I can just 
Another benefit of using these Elizabeth Ward, if you don't have as many colours, um, as many diamonds, it's got quite a big base, so you can just dip your pen in. So let's fill that little gap. Okay, uh, Amy, she said, you just did a tip or a tip and trick, she said, when you, with tipping the pot to one side when getting the diamond out, when only needing one or two. See, this is what I need, Amy, thank you. Pointing out the little tips and tricks that I do without realizing they're a tip and trick. So thank you for that one. Um, very similar to what I've just done to get the X out. The pot was big enough for me to actually find a diamond that was on the bottom, that was placed in the right direction, and I could use the tub like a tray. This will have been on, it was on a Diamond Art Club Mother Earth video where I used the round pots. And what I did was I actually sort of tipped the pot to the side so that I could get to ones that were on the bottom because the pot was fuller. So thank you for that one, Amy. I'll note that down um, for when I get a minute to get my head around all my tips and tricks and line them up and sort of start up doing some more of those again. Uh, Tony, she says, love the poppy chat. She sounds adorable. Uh, she has got a couple of sections of her own work in progress done. Uh, it's a 40 by 50 from the works, she says, but it's very colourful. I need to go into the works. I haven't been into our town centre for months and months. I can't remember the last time I went in. I know I have looked at what they've had at the range and hobby craft. Um, the range tends to have a lot of craft buddy, I think it is. Um, I have had a couple of craft buddy before that I've ordered directly from them. I get my sealer from them. I say get my, I've got one tub that's still going. Um, but I got my sealer from there. Um, and they have quite a few of those. And Hobbycraft tends to have quite a few of the diamond dots. I actually picked up a cushion cover, I think, that I did from them a few years back. But there's more and more places that are doing them. I actually can't wait until I go to Australia and get to go to a Kayser store. Because I've seen Kayser have started doing some diamond art. And I really like some of the ones that I've seen. Maybe I should send my dad on a shopping trip. Uh, even though my mum diamond paints, my dad is the one that tends to go into the town or the city um, more often. He likes to just go browsing and my dad's the shopper <laughs> over my mum. So maybe I need to take some screenshots and See if my dad can pick some of the ones up that I really like. Uh, All Things Crafted by Kaz says, just realised that she put singing instead of painting. She was in an anxious frame of mind. Don't worry, I may well have corrected it. Uh, she said it was only the once, thankfully, but it still made her wary of getting in lifts now. So we did read a comment um, Obviously, a few whip and chats ago where all things crafted by Kaz, she did get stuck in a lift, which I'm so glad that it's all sorted, but I can understand why you are wary completely. Right, quick change of battery. Right, I'm in two mines now. This is the lowest one, is A. But that will start to scatter and fill up this big bit. But I've also got a little bit here. So what I think I might do is fill in these because there's not too many of them. And then I'll work on the bigger one. 
so let's get these peas done because they actually don't move over to the other section so we'll get this little little cubic section filled in and then I'll move over onto this big section that then does scatter into quite a few different places stick diamond stick stay over there so that is P done and then I do have a couple of J's that are at the top and one over on this side where's J there it is do I dip no I was trying to see it might have been worth messing for one diamond but it wasn't as easy and I have quite a few up here so let's just go with go with the tray oh and I may have tipped out exactly the right number of diamonds oh love it when that happens beautiful right now we get to some of the color that i have absolutely loads of in this painting which is 3865 this is the color that is used the most though we actually didn't get it out on the first section But I'm sure it will appear a lot more from now on. Just trying to get that diamond to push in. Um, Cowl Sparkles says they've just put their first order in with me and they're so excited. Oh, thank you so much for your support and your business and I hope you really, really enjoy it always makes me smile sending out orders some of them are just just so so pretty when they go out I keep meaning to take photos of some I know Megan did one and put it on her story or on the page story the other day um, of just a, a pretty order going out I need to try and do that a little bit more often um, and people can keep an eye out and see if they're their order gets on the pretty list for that day. Though they all look pretty. Um, but there are some that just, the different combination of things, they're just so nice to pack up. Um, Darcy says, okay, she says, now that the kitchen is pretty much done, how much is Megan loving it? <laughs> uh, she would love to have just enough counter space and cupboard storage for all of her cooking and baking ware. Yes, Megan does seem to be really loving it. Do find now that all the preparation for meals is done over in the corner with the cooker and everything. That tends to be where it's done. Um, even though one of the counter spaces is not as deep. So one of them is only 400 mils deep rather than 600 mils deep. Um, it still seems to work for all the prep and it does go into a corner, which of course gives you even more room. And then it goes round to the side of the cooker. So yeah, it's definitely being loved that all the prep can be done right next to the hob. Um, and yeah, we've had many a lovely HelloFresh and other meals since. And the kitchen is, is going down really well. Though a lot of the cleanup seems to be me. <laughs> if there are any dishes now that do need doing, whether it be pans or chopping boards that can't go in the dishwasher, slash won't fit in the dishwasher, so especially if we've, you know, used two or three pans to cook the meal, we tend to put the dirtier ones in the dishwasher and hand wash the others just rather than filling up the dishwasher straight away again after, 
after emptying it. Um, it seems to be me that mainly clears those up, but yeah, the new kitchen is is being loved, that's for sure. And I actually enjoy pottering in there and cleaning and tidying it up just because it looks so nice once it has been done. I think that's the main reason. Um, Elizabeth says, how does she kit down without DMC? She says, please help me. Um, Mops the Tops has replied. Um, I love it when people reply and help out with other comments. It's like a little community, especially when it's taken me 10 days to get to the comments. Um, so Mops the Top says, if you have DMC spares already, try matching them up as close as possible and putting them away with those. Um, she says she also keeps a 56 slot size box to keep the drills the unmatched drills in there for safety. Um, I do actually have a couple of videos on how I put away some diamonds that don't have a DMC number. Elizabeth, there is two videos on it. So if you go to the website Add More Zest and go to videos, there is a section called No DMC Number. And there's two videos in there on the way I did it. Um, but basically there was one where I was de-kitting a uh, painting that did have DMC numbers. I went through all my diamonds that didn't have DMC numbers to see if any matched. And if they did, I would de-kit them along with my other kit. So in effect, you could just keep doing that anytime you de-kitted check if any match what you've you've got in another storage place and de-kit them that way over time. Um, and then I also did one where I de-kitted using a DMC colour chart that I had already stuck diamonds onto for any that I had, any diamonds that I already had in my stash and I used that to match up to the closest DMC match and de-kitted that way. So there's two videos of me de-kitting non-DMC numbers and that should give you an idea of which one may work best for you. One does take longer than the other um, uh, but one of them does involve the diamonds all going away and the other one involves you having a separate place for your non-DMC numbers and putting them away bit by bit over time. So have a nosy. Um, Carol, she says her birthday is the 30th of April and she will be 50 this year. Um, she said, so when you said that your birthday was at the end of the month, it made her smile. Yes, my birthday is, well, in relation to Carol's, my birthday is nearly at the end of the month. Not quite at the end end, but it's close to the end of the month. Um, yeah, and I'm just happy to have the day off work. I always book my birthday off work, always. That's the one thing I don't wanna be doing on my birthday is, is dealing with customer complaints through work. I don't need to hear that. I like to have a day of pottering. Um, Cindy says she has try, been trying to resist buying a tray. She has quite a few, she says, and she does have her very favourite, but you may have enabled me to take the plunge. Uh, I know you've said that you have no place, she says, to hang your little dreamer's tree from Heaven and Earth Designs once it's finished. So whatever will you do, she says, once after all those hundreds of hours making it, it is truly gorgeous. Um, I'm not sure. I may find somewhere that can hang it and give it away. 
um, it will probably just sit about for a while until you know something comes up where I could determine that I could give it away to somebody. Um, I definitely don't think that possibly might be a wall, a, a wall in the hall where it might be able to go. Uh, but I don't think we have a wall that is that deep, even in our hallway, which is where you normally end up with, um, because our ceiling does come lower. It's not one of the ceilings that just goes straight to the flat part. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure, but it's the process I enjoy doing more, um, especially because I'm using my spares as well. I don't feel like I've spent hundreds of pounds and I'm doing nothing with it. Um, I've not spent a lot on it in the grand scheme of things. I've probably spent more on some higher quality kits for single paintings that are a lot smaller. So I don't feel like it, it's an investment money-wise that I need to get back. Um, I'm just enjoying the process. But I'm sure I will end up coming up with some sort of idea um, at some point in the few years that it'll take me to get it finished. <laughs> but it's the process I enjoy more. Definitely the process. Um, Cat Lady, she says, it's looking good. And this is on my Mother Earth painting again. Uh, she says it's nice and colourful and then she says by the way she's a single placer too single placer like me but she also still uses the blue wax you do what works for you I think I said this in the last video discussing somebody who still uses wax if it works if it ain't broke don't fix it so if it works for you, then carry on, because why not? It's like the single place and it works for me. Why fight with multi-placers when I just get too, too fussy about how it lines them up to use them? Yes, I might get things done quicker, but as I mentioned in relation to the heaven and earth design, it's the process that I enjoy. So why not make the most out of the process by single placing my diamonds? Because then I get, it might take me a little bit longer, but that's fine. Because all I'm going to do is kit up another one and get working on another one as soon as I finish this one anyway. It just means that my stash will last a little bit longer, especially if I don't know where they're going saves me having too many completed with no home to go to. Um, Melissa, she says, after you mentioned um, that Hobby put a picture of Luna on the Facebook group, she said she did go have a look. Yeah, Hobby put some pictures up in the Facebook group just to explain my absence <laughs> for a few days. Um, and the reason behind that absence, so there is a few cute pictures of Luna on the group. Um, she says, oh my goodness, she says she is very cute. Uh, she's really missing her Lola, who is three years old, and a Cocker Spaniel Cross Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Um, said she also has nutty moments. She's currently in a doggy foster home uh, while they're in the refuge because no dogs are allowed. She says, but she can visit her daily and take her out, but she really misses her. Uh, so they're hoping that they can get a house very soon so that they can take her home with them. Yeah, our, our Luna is a cutie. Um, she is... She is a cockapoo, um, and a cockapoo is a cross of a, well, primarily a cockapoo is a cross with a cocker spaniel and a poodle. 
um, but Luna is actually a cross with a cockapoo and a miniature poodle. So her mum, I think it was her mum, her mum was a cross of a cocker spaniel, uh, a, yeah, a cocker spaniel and a poodle. And then she is the second, is it 2B or something? I don't know, they've got different, they've got different things. But even though um, she's a cross of a cockapoo and a miniature poodle, she does seem to have quite a few prominent spaniel traits. So her nose and her ears definitely remind me more of a spaniel. She is classed as an apricot, so that's her colouring, is apricot, which is probably, again, a bit more spaniel. Um, but yeah, we'll see what other things come out. I mean, one blessing of her being a bit more spaniel than poodle is that while she still gets brushed pretty much daily at the moment, we're trying to do a little bit each day, so she gets more and more used to it. Sometimes she's more tolerant than others. Um, is her fur is not quite as curly as a poodle. So it's a little bit easier to manage, especially when she's, you know, not happy with you. Well, she just tries to bite the brush. It's not that she doesn't like the brushing. She just thinks it's playtime and wants to wants a bite. Um, yeah, but her fur is definitely a lot easier to brush and doesn't tend to get as matted because she seems to be a little bit more spaniel in that regard. But she's a cutie. Cutie matootie. Is that, is that the way the phrase? Cutie matootie? Something like that. I can't even remember where I got that from. <sighs> Come out with random stuff. Oh, and there's a P I missed. I knew that would happen. Oh well, we'll get that one filled in now. Uh, Juan says, love your videos and love the picture. Um, and they wish I had a beautiful pen like mine and a tray one day. What pen was I? Oh, I was using the blue pen from our shop in that one. Maybe you'll be able to treat yourself at some point soon. Maybe if you've got a birthday coming up, pop pop the pen and tray on your list. But yeah, I'm forever changing my pens. I'm currently on this month's limited edition pen because it's very spring-like and it makes me smile. There is probably too many of these to keep going dipping into the pot, but at the moment they're behaving themselves. So I'm going to carry on because why not? It's variety, isn't it? And of course, I've managed to pick up two together for the last one. There we go. H. Okay, this one's in a bigger pot, so I'm probably gonna tip these out. It'd be a little bit easier. Tip out a few, see if I can get the right amount. Maybe, maybe not. Um, Dale says, quick question, where did you get your large clip that you use at the top of your painting? Um, they also said, loved seeing little Luna. We've also just got a new puppy. They said, little Fudge, I love that name, uh, is a terror, but so cute. Uh, you can't stay cross with her for long. Well, that's probably a good thing because I think they do forget soon enough, you know, if you have been cross with them for any reason. They're very forgiving when the love comes back. Um, the big clip, which is this one, which I've actually just got on the side of my painting, doesn't so much need it on this one, but it's just there in case I knock things. Um, I actually got it from DIY Choose as a set of two, but I think somebody said that they're not on their website anymore. So what you're best searching for is towel clips 
I think that's what they're called. So they, they're often sold as towel clips, I'm guessing, for stopping the wind taking your towel when it's on a sun lounger on the beach, maybe. Um, but have a search for towel clips, and I find they're really, really handy. I actually use them more than I thought I would. I was using the little quilt clips and loved them. Um, but yeah, these are definitely getting loads more use. Right, second bigger than normal section is done. Normally I would just be working on a section this size, but this is sort of one and a half of those sizes. So we're going for bigger sections to start off, which is quite nice when you start a painting, slows down a little bit in the middle, speeds up at the end. But we've definitely got a bit of nice floaty colour. There is a little bit of gapping in these diamonds. They're not the snuggest fit I'd like, but from a distance, they do look okay. So it's not one that I'm getting hugely frustrated with, just a little bit, because I can end up seeing some of the black lines behind because they're quite prominently black. But we will keep going. Thank you so much for joining me for this whip and chat and I'll speak to you all again soon.